Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I wanted to give you my top 10 best budget cards from the Ungoro set for new players. So that's a bit of a mouthful, but what I mean from that is that for new players, these are the best cards you can craft on a budget in order to improve your standard play. So getting started at number 10, we have Ravenous Pterodax. Now this is not one of the best cards in the set, but why it's in the top 10 list is that a lot of newer players are going to naturally tend towards stacks that have a lower total dust cost. So one of those stacks is the classic zoo deck, which revolves around playing the best early game minions that you can, possibly followed up by cards like Doom Guard, in order to empty out your hand establish board dominance, and then rely on your hero power as a warlock. The Ravenous Pterodax is a pretty good card in Zoo. If you happen to pick up cards like the Devil Sore Egg, the combo there is insane. You can uh, quite reasonably get a 5-5 from the Devil Sore, followed up by a 7-7 from the Pterodax, which is one of the things that actually makes Zoo a decent deck. So if playing an aggressive warlock is anything you have interest in, then having that card is going to be very good for you. Obviously comboing with Devil Soar is nice, but there's also other cards you could use that with. For instance, if you have some cards from the Old Gods set, like Possessed Villager, uh, sacrificing one half of this card in order to power up your Pterodax is also not a bad combination. You could run that and the Egg and make a decent deck from it. The next card here is a major powerhouse in the set. It's called the Spike Ridged Steed. This is a very, very powerful Paladin card. In fact, I would go as far as to say it's one of the cards that makes Paladin so good in the meta currently. Because when you actually buff a minion with this, you're effectively getting two cards value for one, because it dies and it turns into a 2-6 taunt uh, Stegadon, which is normally a four mana minion. So you get the stats of a Stegadon, plus giving any minion taunt, combined with another 4 mana Stegadon, that's like 8 mana for 6 mana, really crazy. Yes, you wouldn't play Stegadon by itself, generally speaking, uh, but the power of having all that combined into a buff card, that should be mentioned that uh, a buff card can instantly affect the field. So you have a minion you want to trade up, you give that minion some extra attack, and you get to make a good trade. This is just an insanely powerful card. It's one of the cards that makes Paladin so great. Yes, it's a rare, so it costs 100 dust, but it is absolutely worth it if you plan on playing Paladin in this set. Next up, another very good Paladin card from the set is the Hydrologist. Now, there are several Paladin variants that exist out there, but most of the competitive ones currently are using some form of Murlocs, which can range anywhere from just Hydrologist to including some of the other Murlocs from the set, as well as some of the classic Murlocs, such as the Rockpool Hunter. The Primal Fin Champion didn't make the cut, by the way. That's not a good card to craft. It's not a very good card. But the Hydrologist is great because you get a 2-mana two 2-2 two two and you get to discover a secret, which is kind of usually choosing from one of five viable secrets or so. Um, and most of them are actually pretty good effects. Uh, redemptioning a minion back to one health, uh, the, then there's the Getaway Kodo to return a minion to your hand, which you can play later on in combination uh, with some of the more powerful Paladin cards. It's just a really good utility card. And if you happen to have Karazhan as a set, you can combine that with Curator, but Hydrologist is just pretty solid on its own, so it's a decent card to craft for 40 dust. Next up, one of my favorites from the set, also a good Paladin card, I might add, but What's notable about the Stonehill Defender is that it is good for multiple classes. So Stonehill Defender is obviously really good in Paladin because you can discover some of the best Paladin legendaries, which happen to be Taunt. So you would definitely include Stonehill Defender in a Paladin deck. But you can also play it in classes like Shaman for the ability to get Wide Eyes and Earth Elemental as discoverable Taunt cards. Also, it's worth mentioning that Priest has a decent Taunt you can discover off of it, the Tortoise and Shell Razor which is a play you can make immediately after throwing down a Stonehill Defender and this Tertullian Shell Razor. Now, in the competitive decks, you would not necessarily play Stonehill Defender in Priest, but it's not a bad option there. It is, however, really good in Warrior as well. If you happen to be playing uh, Fire Plume's Heart 
quest warrior which of course is a legendary um, so odds are if you're a new player you probably don't have this card it's also really good in there because that'll be two taunt minions that count towards the quest but if you're just playing a gen general control warrior you don't necessarily have to have fire Prince heart you can just try to shut down aggro decks uh, discover cards like ally armorsmith or dire horn hatchling it is pretty good in warrior as well Next up, the Radiant Elemental, which is a new Priest common. Um, it's a 2 mana, 2, 3, and your spells cost 1 less. So this is kind of similar to Mage's Sorcerer's Apprentice card, except that it's for Priest and that the stats are flipped around. Um, so Sorcerer's Apprentice is a really good Mage card, so there's not really any reason why Radiant Elemental wouldn't be a good early game play for Priest. And as it turns out, it's played in a lot of Priest decks. Uh, you can get double the effect off of this card if you happen to play it with cards like Shadow Visions. But even if you just throw cards like Thought Steel into your deck, you could get a two mana draw two cards, kind of like the Sorcerer's Apprentice Arcane Intellect combo. Maybe not quite at the same level, but pretty solid. Also, you can see uh, there is value in getting out a two mana minion early on as Priest, because you can throw in the Cabal Talon Priest from the Mean Streets of Gadget Sand ex uh, expansion, which is another really solid com uh, comment I should mention. So next up, the Jeweled Macaw is a 1-mana one 1-1 one, one, and a really strong Hunter common that was added in the set. Uh, it's played in a lot of Hunter decks, even the competitive ones, um, so this is a really good card to pick up. Because although it's just a 1-mana one 1-1, one, it's a good play at pretty much any time in the game. So it's sort of like a filler card. And even if you get it later on, same with Stonehill Defender, you'll be able to fill your hand back up with another random beast, which could be anywhere from a Savannah High Main to another Jeweled Macaw to that new 9-mana uh, 610 Taunt Mammoth. But with early game plays like Jeweled Macaw and Alley Cat, you really can't go wrong in Hunter deck. You'll see these all the time. Speaking of early game plays, next up we have the Firefly, which is a neutral 1-2 Battlecry add a 1-2 elemental to your hand. So interestingly enough, most elemental decks didn't really make the cut in this expansion, but this card still has plenty of use in more aggressive decks. You can play this in a Hunter deck in combination with cards like Direwolf Alpha to basically trade up into an opponent's 2-drop, making this effectively a 1-mana uh, 2-2 two -two once you throw down that Direwolf. Um, and you can also play it in decks like aggressive druid decks, where having a bunch of these little guys you can play becomes really valuable when you can buff them up. And similar to that, Evolve Shaman also happens to play Firefly, great with Blame Chunk Totem and great with Evolve, having more minions to buff up and uh, possibly Bloodlust, possibly Evolve. It's a really solid card. And also, if you do happen to want to play an elemental deck, even though it might not be top tier, this is a great card to have because um, it gives you two chances to activate those other elementals, which require you to play an elemental on the previous turn to get that bonus effect. Now this brings us to Mage, which has the Arcanologist, a new 2-mana two 2-3 two, common. Where Battlecry, you draw a secret from your deck. This is a very, very powerful card. And it's also great in Arena, so if you are able to put this into your Constructed deck, it makes Secrets a lot better, because any Secret is basically going to be drawn for free. Uh, remember, a 2-mana two 2-3 two, is kind of an average stat line for a 2-mana card, so getting an immense effect like drawing a card, and even more specifically drawing a very specific card in your deck, because you're only going to have one or two, maybe three types of Secrets in your deck, is insane. It's selective draw on top of a good body. Cards like Loot Order wish that they were a 2-3 draw card as a death battle. I think by far this is the strongest mage common in the set. Now here is another defensive card which is really solid in a lot of decks, the Tar Creeper, a 3 mana 1-5. Uh, taunt elemental and this gets plus two attack during your opponent's turn Which means that if you are playing a defensive deck Well, you don't really need to do lots of damage to your opponent Then this is going to be a 3-5 taunt wall for three mana You could compare this to Sinjin shield master, which is a four mana 3-5 taunt wall The only difference is that the Sinjin doesn't lose two attack when it's on your turn But if you're playing defensive, you don't really care about that another 
icing on the cake here is that it's an elemental, which means if you are playing an elemental package deck, you'll have synergy there, which is a nice bonus on top of things. But people like to play Tar Creeper just in defensive decks purely because it's a really hard to get through wall. It's got great stats for three mana if you are relying on your opponent attacking into your minions as they try to get to your face. Finally, in my opinion, the best budget card for new players in this set is going to have to go to Crackling Razamaw. This is a 2-mana 3-2 common for Hunters, where Battlecry you adapt a friendly beast. So the idea here is that you would play a card like Alley Cat or the previously mentioned Jeweled Macaw on turn 1. You follow that up with Crackling Razamaw, and you get to adapt that minion. So what adapt means is you pick from one of 10 effects, well, actually, you get to pick from one of three, kind of like a discover effect, but there's ten possibilities that can show up there, which range from plus three attack, plus three health, divine shield, stealth, taunt, uh, all kinds of different effects, and most of which are going to be beneficial for you if you can land it on a minion. Which means that as a solid stat line, two mana, three, two, average, kind of like a two mana, two, three, you have the likely potential of getting an extra plus three attack, plus three health, possibly a wind fury, all these effects which can be crazy or even devastating in certain circumstances, like poisonous, the ability to instantly trade into a bigger minion. It just makes Crackling Razamaw a crazy hunter card. This goes in every single hunter deck at the moment, as far as I know, and it's a common, which means you cannot go wrong with this. Hunter is an easy to play deck. Uh, if you put Crackling Razamaw in a hunter deck and you play that, uh, you'll probably do pretty decently in the latter. So that's going to be it for my top 10 best budget cards for new players in the Ungoro set. I've been Dark Skeleton. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you guys in my future video content.